Hey guys, uh, another video here repairing this time on MEFI 4. This is sent to me by Sam Hughes in Connecticut, I think. Uh, maybe it's not, let me see. No, it's a uh, Kiwi, so that's probably Kentucky. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so his name is Sam Hughes. Uh, his concern is that he has the one side ECM or MEFI 4 not working properly and then he swapped the computer from the other side. This is again a both ECM and it started working good. So these are his serial information. That is his computer so he can see the number 40136. Final reference is good. I have right now the computer running and we can see this is the injector on bank one which is not pulling down to to ground properly. I have in here the ESC signal, which is steady, and then the tax signal. This is just a fuel pump activation, which we can see there is completely grounded. That is good. But I actually seen, and I can see that in here, where I can, I mean, it's reading injector milliseconds, but you see it's working and not working. Let me stop that one second, because we just saw them working right there. So if I go back to the uh, last capture, I mean, right there. So we can see where now I pull it down and then it went back to like not pulling. So this is exactly what it's doing as as it is. So definitely this will not run or it will try to run and then, then stop, not run, stop and not run. And we have on the folds, um, I erased the first one. He has a stop tail set, a stop tail set and now it has a crank signal fault and that cannot be erased so i'm going to open the computer and then find out what we can see because definitely i mean this is definitely easy to reproduce we have everything for the computer to work i check my signals and the crank signal signal is good see right there it's working and we can see that there it work and not work but again so this is something internally in the computer Hey guys, uh, continuing here with Sam Hughes uh, computer. I have performed a few more tests and I think that the problem we have is actually, well, it might be probably uh, software. At first I thought of, you know, trying to find you know, maybe the pins, uh, you know, these jumpers loose or something like that. But as you can see, the computer is nice and clean. There's absolutely no damage on the pins or in any of the components. I perform, let me just take you here. Give me one second to get my glasses off. All right, guys, as you can see, I have now the screen recording, so I don't have to be actually put them in, in there. So what I have done, um, it's a few tests. Uh, let me go in order. Let me go over to his folder, uh, customer reports, and this is uh, 5.7. Oh, but this is a Volvo Penta, so I'm in the wrong folder. Customer MFE4, and this is OSID right here, Sam Hughes. Uh, okay, so. First, let me show you the results on the Kurt Tracer. I'm sorry, this is a little a little glary probably, but we will see um, the results. So as far as Kurt Tracer, everything is, is is good. You can see the all the tests around the injector drivers. I also perform a test on the crank sensor signal, which I'm going to show in a second, and also pass. Um, so everything on the board is green. All the injectors drivers and injector pre-drivers which is this area here right the crystals the diodes to protect the circuit are good so all that is good so i'm like okay this is uh not what i expected right all right so the next test that i did uh let me see what else i have okay so i did a test on the board i'm going to open picoscope as you can see here so this is a test right at the micro, uh, sorry, not the microprocessor, right at the IC that controls the actual um, signal coming from pin J1, or oh, sorry, J216, which is right here. It goes through uh, resistor, um, I think it's 400 kilo ohm resistor, 
through another capacitor to ground. It has two actual two protections, one before the resistor and another one after it enters this IC and then sends the signal to the microprocessor. I was looking at this because I was getting a CKP signal uh, that I didn't see in the history, you know, when I connected first the computer. I didn't have that. And actually, let me open that. Um, well, one second. So the history, this is his history. As you can see, the only the only thing we have is NG shut down telltale set. Nothing on the on the CKP. So looking at that history and everything, I'm like, okay, let me double check my connections. And it was indeed my connection to the simulator. The one was given that. So it was just the pins in here. I corrected that and then no more. So I was doing a check. As you can see, the green is I have the steel green channel connected to the CKP here. And then this yellow one, I was touching dry the signal after the IC and they were perfect image. I saved the entire recording. As you can see, I got 20 through, 23 uh, windows waveforms saved. And we can see on the blue channel, which is injector A, that indeed is happening. So even though the signal is perfect, a perfect image right through the IC and all the way down to the microprocessor, we are getting that problem. All right, so I move away from that. I did perform another test. Let me go back to his folder. Uh, before repairs, at crystal driver. Okay, this is the one we have right now. I save it. So the next test that I did, okay, so on these computers, we have again, if we go back to the pictures, we have the drivers. And then we have the pre-drivers, that crystal pre-driver here. This is the one that's going through again. I said it is a resistor and it's going to take the signal from the microprocessor. It has a ground signal. It's a steady ground. So when this is grounded, it will ground it, the driver and then obviously the injector itself. And that's just the way the system works in here. Uh, we got another circuit through here, but just to make it simple, so you guys understand better what we have is, that's, that's what it is. So uh, right now, we're experiencing the same, very dim, no pull to ground injectors. So what I did is, again, I using one of my uh, um, attenuated leads, I went over to the actual control side of those crystals. So I will be like right here. And that's what I, you know, what I was doing in here, just poking in here carefully, not to damage the, you know, the board or anything. That's what I'm using that attenuated lead. And then we have this result. So we can see that right here, the yellow channel, again, is my pin lead, right? That I'm checking in there. Uh, if I go back, all this time, the driver on the injector B is completely grounded through the entire time. You can see the, the uh, sorry, the jet, <laughs> sorry, the blue channel, uh, just on and off and on and off, but not really pulling all the way to ground because if we measure that, it's just going down to like nine from 12 point something to nine. So that's not enough to pull the injector down, but this one is. If we see the red channel is now in zero. Why is that? Because the driver for the blue, sorry, for the red, which I was, you know, connected at the moment on the yellow channel, it is now in five volts. So this should be an on and off signal the same way as you know, the computer is commanded to go on and off for 2.5 or 2.1 milliseconds, whatever the computer is commanding. Uh, but that's not the case. In there, we can see that it's completely on. And this is not me commanding anything. This is a computer doing that. We can see that here. So on this yellow part, again, we have zero volts. Let me put another cursor in here. So this is what the computer should be doing when, you know, commanding the injector. So this is, again, um, trying to, because it's also uh, feedback on the system. And this is why we're with looking at the time. It's just a feedback going in through the uh, driver and not the actual gate on the driver, sorry, on the pre-driver and then make it a work. When the pre-driver gets activated by this zero to five volts signal and is when the injector goes completely down and it gets pulled down to ground for whatever time the computer again commands. In this, in this time, we can see that this is indeed the complete control of that injector because at that time, let's say for this one, if we measure this, it was on for, 
uh, 24.9 milliseconds. So that was long. Because yeah, what we're looking for, if we, I'm sorry, I tried to, if we move over to here, this is what we're looking for. We can see the difference on, on time. If we move it right here, just briefly, we can have like 3.1. If I get this closer, it's more or closer to that 2.8 milliseconds that we got there. But yeah, so this is, this is definitely Sam's problem. I don't think we now have any issues with the actual drivers because everything is there so i'm going to run this again with the same and i'm just going to be touching so let me just get into the microscope because that's not enough for my vision to see what i'm doing in there i want to just make sure that i am poking into the correct wire and expect one of those because i have not seen it in a while and i hear the injector actually pull down We can see that that is a perfect image. I will hope to see this, 0 to 12, but we don't have that. I'm just going over to, sorry, to the rest of the circuitry just to see, because I mean, I really, really doubt it that we have any anything else in here. Because sometimes by poking with your lead, you will create a, uh, an extra path to ground, but that's not the case. So let me turn the computer off and see if it is will react again. Just kind of like hear those injectors because we will see it on the image immediately if one gets pulled down to ground. And I don't see nothing in here wrong that will tell me otherwise that is there. And you can see right now, this is zero, zero, nothing is happening. I can actually command that and I can do that. I can do so, give me just one second. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide five volts through that same path in there and you will see the result. I'm doing this through a resistor uh, test light, right? So this has some resistance, so it's not a full uh, voltage going through even though I mean the computer is bad it's not that we can really damage anything but just in case I touch a ground or something I'm not going to you know burn my fuse inside my simulator so if I do this we can immediately see the red working and if I do the same thing on the other side which is let me just follow that Uh, it should be here. We can see it on the blue channel as well. So this is what the computer is not doing. So see how the red channel is now. Every time I do that, I'm going to just carefully do that. And then we can see the response of the injector driver. So yeah, it is definitely nothing, at least nothing that I can work on. The only solution that I find here for him, the only solution that I found for him is to send this to Bob, see if he can um, put a calibration and see if he that corrects. Again, this is not going to be either Bob's responsibility or mine, because this is, if it's uh, the end of that microprocessor, uh, neither Bob or I can change or repair that. But yeah, I want to show you, and this is, you know, what I take my time to actually fully test a computer and then show that indeed all the drivers, because what I'm doing here is doing what the microprocessor should be doing, which is sending this signal here. And as soon as I do it, look at the red channel, going to ground, commanding that injector on, and I can do that same thing with the blue channel. It's a little hard because it's, that one is uh, in the middle of like layers in there. I am doing this even with my, uh, uh, sorry, with my glasses on. It's a little hard for me to see there because yeah, there is that is a very thin, uh, hopefully you guys can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Too much out of focus or too close i'm sorry guys so i'm just trying to be careful so that's the blue channel 
and that's the red channel and we can immediately see those results in the screen so if i set this and we go back we can see the red channel and we can see the blue channel and when i do this it's being pulled completely to ground we can see that 0 0.047 so again uh, that's just as much as i can do i will be calling sam uploading this video i'm going to probably just do a one whole video because this is not a, res a result of repair and then give him my recommendation as far as how to proceed after after here but yeah, thank you so much, guys, guys, for visiting the channel. I hope that you see. I am also sharing a lot of good tests in here, more than what I should, because I know there is a lot of a lot of guys trying to pick up my brain and do this by themselves, and and that's not really what I'm looking for. But I don't mind to share information. I am know with these modules, uh, I would not recommend if you don't know what you're doing, don't even touch it. Uh, this is a very easy to damage uh, component. It's not really easy to replace any components in it unless you have skills and tools to do it. Because these are hybrid ceramic boards. They have a special gel that you can see here. This is a special gel that is re-enterable. I have the gel, uh, which is a two-stage, kind of like epoxy, let's say, right, that you mix together, and it will come and then dry it up like this crystal, and it's re-enterable like this. You know, I can enter with my uh, leads and poke and without damaging the actual gel, and then that's that's why it's in there for. But yeah, okay, guys, um, now again, I don't want to take much longer of your time. Uh, Sam, this is the result. I will be contacting you shortly with uh, my findings. Thank you so much for sending this computer to us. Uh, see you next time. And thank you so much all to watch my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you like the content. If you don't, or if you do, please co uh, comments. You know, put some comments on, on my videos. Let me know what else you would like to see, why you don't like my channel, or if you like my channel. I like to get a little feedback from all of you and see what I need to improve. I'm trying to make it, you know, uh, a little appealing for everybody. I mean, I think electronics has always been at least my love. I'm not sure, you know, everybody likes as much as I do the electronic, but otherwise, if you do, put a comment. Let me know. All right, guys. Talk to you next time. See you. Bye-bye.